organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up tonight on Daily Iowan TV, the Crisis Center is taking to the web. Find out more next. And the controversial statue from December is making headlines again. And in sports, the women's gymnastics team faced Big Ten foam Maryland this weekend. The margin of defeat, only four and a half tenths of a point. Find out who came out on top coming up. We'll have all this and more coming up. You're watching Daily Iowan TV. Welcome back, I'm Megan Horhan. And I'm Selena Carr. Our lead story tonight involves the highly controversial statue that was put on the University Pentecrest. Newly released footage from police body cameras is bringing to light some tense moments surrounding the December display of a KKK statue on the Pentecrest. The seven foot statue designed by art professor Sirhat Tanya Lakar came at a time when racial tensions and police brutality was on the hot seat nationally. The statue was intended to show the presence of racism in our country. Instead, it drew harsh criticism and incited fear in some UI students. We wanted to be able to talk to our president of the University of Iowa to tell her that we thought that that was not okay. That's why we came here today. Demonstrations, regardless of content, must get prior permission from the university. Students don't panic come Thursday when your classes courses look a little differently. The UI's registrar will implement a new course numbering system beginning Thursday night. Courses listed on university degree audits, which track students' progress towards completing their degree, will move from being listed in a 3-3 format to a 4-4 format. The first part of each course will also change from a number representing the department to letters indicating the college or program offering the course. Assistant Provost Larry Lockwood says this change will make the course numbering system the same across all applications at the university. It's a sure bet that after all this snow, most Iowans are praying for spring to come early. But it won't, according to Punks Atani Phil, Pennsylvania's famous weather predicting groundhog. Phil's handler says the rodent saw his shadow this morning. And as the legend goes, that means we're in for six more weeks of winter. Well, Selena, I'm a little bit more ready for some nicer weather coming up. What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely, because Sunday was horrible. But Beth Anderson is sta standing by in the weather studio with our forecast for the week. Beth, how's it looking? Well, guys, it looks like the snow is not going anywhere. In the morning, we see temperatures sitting at a chilly 8 degrees. You may want to bundle up a little more than usual on your morning walk to class. On into the afternoon, we see temperatures thankfully rising into the high teens and low 20s. And sadly, it looks like we aren't done with the snow just yet. More snow showers will be heading our way throughout the afternoon on into the early evening. Later in the evening, we see temperatures staying right around the low 20s with chances of snow subsiding. Today, the famous Punxsutawney Phil saw a shadow on this frigid Groundhog Day, predicting six more weeks of winter. He was clearly right as we see more snow showers on into Wednesday as well. With the amount of snow we are having, Iowa City has put a snow ordinance in place until 8 a.m. on Wednesday. On-street parking in the downtown business district is restricted in order for the plows to be able to get through, so be sure to move your vehicles. The rest of the week warms up as we see temperatures in the mid-30s and high 20s. And that's all I have for you guys in the studio. Back to you at the desk. The Johnson County Crisis Center is taking to the web, using a 24-hour online chat to provide people with emotional support. The online chat allows people to talk with crisis center counselors anonymously. It's a great tool for people to get involved with a counselor who otherwise would not seek help. Chat specialists go through intensive training, 60 hours in a total with 16 hours in applied suicide intervention skills training. Common chat topics are suicide, LGBTQ, sexual assault, and non-suicide self-inflicted injuries. The chat is designed to create safety and action plans with the chatters, making sure at every point throughout the conversation they feel safe and know what steps they need to take. It's just like, you know, if you get emergency care for, you know, say like your arm broken or something like that, it's much better if you get it done right away. 
So just knowing that our services are able to be accessed and getting people through that acute period of suicidal feelings really can lessen the, the chances of them making an actual attempt on their own life. The chat feature has been running for four years now and is offered in Mandarin. The online chat does not require an account. You can access the chat through the Johnson County Crisis Center website or reach the hotline at 319-351-0140. We are just four days away from the Big Dance Marathon event, and everyone is gearing up just for the kids. Tonight, we'll profile another family that will benefit from the funds Dance Marathon will raise. Katie Stites has the story. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <coughs> oh, you missed. Oh, I like that one with the butterfly. Can I fix it a tiny bit? Yeah. Mariah Haveman is a little girl with a big personality <laughs> and a big family to balance her out. She was diagnosed with leukemia about a year and a half ago, but lately she's been pretty healthy. I love to wear these because it's kind of like I have hair, but I actually don't. And so they're really fun and I like to pretend it's my hair. Should we Besides being with her family, some of her favorite things are reading, Disney's Frozen, and My Little Pony. But her absolute favorite thing is baking, which she wants to do when she grows up. You'll typically see Mariah with an adorable smile and a lot of positive energy. And though she has had some tough treatments, she has a lot of support from friends and family. The initial diagnosis of cancer is always one of those things where you go, you know, this is bad, right? There's, it doesn't seem like it's a good thing. Um, but every piece of news we've received since then has just been 100% blessing and God just really taking care of us and um, sending people to surround us and, and help us through things. And she has, she's been readmitted one time for illness, but other than that, she's been healthy. Like we've, got, we've gone through the winter without even colds and things like that. So we're just very, very thankful. The Haveman family is excited to show how thankful they are this weekend at UI Dance Marathon, a fundraiser for children with cancer. Reporting from Coralville, I'm Katie Stites, Daily Island TV. With so much attention about the terrorist attack in Paris, an even bloodier attack in Africa was overshadowed. Austin Love took a look at how social media can affect our perspective. While over 100 million people tuned in to watch the Super Bowl last night, Millions have neglected to notice the destruction taking place in Nigeria. Boko Haram, an Islamic extremist group, has been brutally murdering thousands of Nigerians. It is the, one of the most bloody groups that we've had on the African continent in the sense that it, not, it doesn't target the military, it doesn't target adults, it goes after children. Literally meaning Western education is forbidden, the struggle with Boko Haram is that there is no reasoning with them. Boko Haram wants to cut itself off from the world as we know it and go back to the dark ages. And uh, as a result, it has just committed all kinds of atrocities. And as the world focused all of its attention on the attacks taking place in Paris, where 17 people were killed, over 2,000 people were killed in Nigeria the same week, all for a similar cause, with one exception. The symbol that was attacked the media, the media are very, very important in the Western society. The media are symbols of freedom. And with that freedom being questioned in some parts of the world, Dr. Echo has one message. It's better to speak about things than to fight over them, to tell people that the, the force of argument is superior to the argument of force. Austin Love, Daily Iowa TV. Thanks, Austin. Interesting take on our responsibility as media. Now, everybody was talking about the men's basketball game against Wisconsin, but Megan, that wasn't the only event happening in Carver Hawkeye Arena over the weekend. Yeah, Selena, women gym hawks were also in action in Iowa City Friday night. Let's toss it over to our own sports studio where Taylor Mathis and Zach Mackey are standing by with more on the game. Guys? Thanks ladies, a whole lot on tap tonight as we do take a look into the women's gymnastics team's performance and have updates from weekend from this weekend with our whip around crew. But first, the women's basketball team came up short last night against Maryland in College Park. The number 17 Hawkeyes lost to the fifth ranked 
ter Terrapins in a close 93 to 88 matchup. Although Iowa's shooting percentage was superior, the Terrapins dominated on the board. 12 more rebounds and 10 more free throws was the difference in this one, as it was just a one possession game with just a minute to play. The defeat snaps the Hawks' six-game winning streak and hands them their second loss in this Big Ten season. Women's basketball wasn't the only Hawkeye team taking on Maryland, as the Jim Hawks faced the Terps at home on Friday night as well. The Hawks were looking for their first victory of the season and managed to finally come up with a win in photo finish fashion, beating Maryland by just four and a half tenths of a point. Daily Iowan TV sports reporter Taylor Bartz has more on how one senior helped the Hawks rally from behind to get the W. After Iowa's gymnastics team started out a little rocky against Maryland on Friday, trailing to the Terps after one event, the Jim Hawks had to look to their leaders to get them moving full speed ahead. It's no doubt that senior Sydney Hare has been the driving force behind Iowa gymnastics this season. And after an unexpected fall on her bar routine, everyone wondered if she would be able to pull it together and lead her team to their first W of the season. But for Hare, there was never any doubt. She knew how important this win was for her team, considering their 0-2 start so far this season. Despite the fall on bars, Hare traveled to the beam next, where she contributed to a team best score of 49.025 posting an individual score of 9.80. The Hawks were led in this event by junior Allie Glover. Glover posted a personal best score of 9.875 to win the event and allowed the Hawkeyes to gain the lead over Maryland going into the floor event. It was on this next event that Hare really brought it home for the Hawks. She delivered her routine almost flawlessly, posting an individual score of 9.90 beating her team to an overall score of 48.975 on the event. The Hawkeyes left Carver happy at the end of the night. Along with Glover and Hare's individual wins, the team came out on top against Maryland, posting their best score of the season. Taylor Bartz, Daily Island TV Sports. We will now toss things over to our Whip Around crew, who has updates on how men's swimming, tennis, and track and field did over the weekend. The Iowa Hawkeye men's tennis team won 5-3 over the Yale Bulldogs this past weekend. Iowa's Matt Hagen and Dominic Patrick improved to 3-0 on the season in doubles matches. The Hawkeyes won two of three doubles matches on the day. The Hawkeyes saw success in singles matches going 4-2 on the day. The Hawkeyes will return to action this Friday as they host Marquette at the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreation Complex at 6 p.m. Now I'll toss it over to Alyssa Klosterman who has an update on Iowa swimming. Thanks, Mark. The 19th ranked men's swimming and diving team wrapped up a successful weekend with a sweep at the Shamrock Invitational. The Hawks posted wins over Notre Dame, Incarnate Word, and Missouri State. Roman Trusoff started the Hawkeyes off with a first place finish in the 200 breast, setting a new pool record. The Hawkeyes returned to action February 6 at 6 p.m. against Western Illinois and University of South Dakota here in Iowa City. Now I'll toss it over to Hannah for coverage on track and field. Thanks, Alyssa. The Iowa track and field team took on the UW Invitational this past weekend in Seattle, and for two seniors, Kevin Lewis and Ben Witt, the day of racing was extremely successful. Both Lewis and Witt broke personal and school records in the 3,000 meter race. Lewis crossed the finish line of the nearly two mile run in just seven minutes and 57 seconds, making him the fastest Hawkeye to ever run that distance. His time also ranks him 12th in the nation and first in the Big Ten. Witt finished the race just behind Lewis at eight minutes and 20 seconds. The Hawkeyes will be at Lincoln, Nebraska this weekend for the Husker Invitational. That's all we've got for the whip round today. Guys, back to you. Thanks for that, guys. Well, we're all out of time here in the sports studio. Selena and Megan, back to you. That is all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowan TV, but make sure to check out tomorrow's show for the latest news. Or watch us anytime, day or night at dailyiowan.com. I'm Selena Carr. And I'm Megan Horhan. Thanks for watching and have a great night.